All right, just um, happy to report that I got a extensive reply from Professor Jean Brimon on the <clears throat> Sabine Hassenfelder video that she posted on quantum non-locality and Bell's inequality. And <clears throat> it's a fascinating response from Professor Jean Brimon. And it has to do with the Sabine Hassenfelder um, apparently not accepting the statistical independence mathematics in that's used in quantum physics for the uh, non-locality test and the um I'm not really into statistics, so I know that um, Basil J. Hiley says that uh, the wave function does not even have to be used and due to non-commutativity. So that's a totally different um, approach to Bell's inequality and it's not the same as Sabine Hassenfelder either. And so um, I really appreciated Professor Jean Brimon's response and he said I can post it. So I posted it twice on Sabine Hassenfelder's YouTube channel. One of one was a reply to a comment that she had um, acknowledged with the heart heart response icon or whatever, and so maybe I I don't know if she replied in that thread. I'll have to see you know to see if then she would see the she would read. Professor Jean Brimon's reply. But um, obviously, the Nobel Prize for Bell's inequality has been not accepted by um, Sabine Hassenfelder and <clears throat> Jean Brimon is explaining why this is a problem and also his analysis based on the De Broglie-Bohm theory um, explains the non-locality but it also debunks rel relativity because as the foundation of reality, you can't have relativity because he's, he's explaining that if you're assuming a rest frame, it has to be a preferred rest frame. And if it's, but yet if it's preferred, it has to be unobservable. And so that's a, <clears throat> logical contradiction that is not allowed in um, relativity. And so then you have a um, logical contradiction of that goes against primitive causality because it's, it's showing the future affecting the past. And I know that Jean Brimon, he says that 
he doesn't accept retro causality because that again is assuming this preferred um, rest frame that's unobservable. So, so non-locality is a sort of a deep, um, you might say, existential challenge to that he calls, you know, action at a distance. It is instant action at a distance. It's not just a correlation because of this statistical um, independence. And so that's what makes it so radical is that it violate the Bell's inequality violates that it proves. And like I said, I'm not, you know, I don't go into the, all the statistics. I, um, but Professor Jean Brumon, he has several lectures on YouTube that, that do go into the statistical details if anybody wants to go through the weeds of the the mathematics but um you know if you accept mathematics as you know based on science as science does then that's why the Nobel Prize was given is because it proves the non-locality and um but the big point of professor jean brumont is that the basically the relativity physicists they cannot accept bell's inequality experiment the results they refuse to accept it <laughs> and um this is what's so fascinating about the whole thing. Um, uh, and I, I've discussed this with uh, Professor Basil J. Hiley also. And um, I also heard back from Nobel physicist Brian Josephson this morning. But he, it wasn't, he was just joking around. I sent him um a graphene demonstration of his josephson junction it being used through graphene and he just acknowledged it he and joke he made a joke about it he didn't you know so i will post professor jean brumont's um reply in the video description of this video and also in the comments section and <clears throat> and I will see if it got posted on Sabine's video in her comments section I'll try to find I'll try to find a comment that she replied to and then I'll post it post it in there and that way she'll she should make sure she'll see it and maybe she'll reply to it. I don't know. But <clears throat> it's um it's kind of exciting because the because like Professor John Brumont, he's against the claims of the paranormal, and in his explanation, he goes into astrology and the the scientific claims about astrology and. You know, I don't, I don't, um, I don't argue with him, him, his, the dismissal of the paranormal based on the scientific analysis is perfectly valid. You know, what he's pointing out. Um, but, uh, the, the um the there's a deeper um 
issue going on in the in terms of you know what constitutes a a um, mathematical proof versus an an experimental uh, proof and Bell's inequality um, is both a mathematical and <clears throat> experimental proof and so that's what makes it fascinating is that the the mathematics you use changes the meaning of the experiment and um so i'm not arguing with his analysis at all i'm just saying there's a larger scientific context um that like a like professor um basil j highly said to me you know the non-commutativity it changes physics on a deep level um on a on a really deep level so hopefully basil j highly will come out with his next paper i hope he's it's going well he's working on it i'm trying not to bother him about it because it's been like over a year or maybe a year something i don't know and he's He's like 87 now, I think. So, hope everything's going well for him. And, uh, like I said, it's I will post the reply now. I'm just excited that I, I got it. And, um, I'm not going to pester Professor John Brimon about non-commutativity because I'm pretty sure I, I already asked him about it in terms of like Basil J. Hiley, you know, because Professor Brimon, he relies on the De Broglie model or theory to explain non-locality and, but he doesn't, he doesn't use non-commutativity like Basil J. Hiley does. So I'll just leave it at that, and thank you to Professor Jean Brumont for his extended, extensive reply that I will now, he said I can post it, so I'll now post it.